Why, hello everyone, it's great to be back. Fillers Fillers here. Decided to do another episode of the Railroad Tycoon 3. That's right, I want to get back into it. Want to play some more, want to upload some more videos, want to post some more on some forums. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this one is Across the Alps. So right now it starts off with Craggy Mountain, Pass of the Alps, as our natural barrier to the land trade in Central Europe. In the late 1800s, the Swiss and Italian tunnels through St. Gotthard Pass to connect Zurich, Switzerland, and Milan, Italy. However, one of the lowest passes in the Brenner Pass between Innsbruck, Austria, and Bolzano, Italy. Uh, you can go where you like, but you have to make a rail connection as quickly as possible since time and money will not be on your side. Get through and you'll be a hero, fail and you'll be ruined. So for bronze, connect the following cities by the end of 1910. Milan, uh, Italy, Milan. Zurich, Switzerland. By 1910, Milan, Italy. Zurich, Switzerland. Munich, Germany. Venice, Italy. And falling cities deliver 30 loads of weapons to Munich by the end of 1910. Okay. Uh, may not lay unconnected track, and I also believe that in this one I don't have any competition. So let's get our, well, let's get our train started. Now, I've kind of taken a break from this a little bit as I've been doing recordings for a couple other games, and so uh, if I take a little bit to get back into the swing of things, I apologize immensely, as dividend is not necessary at all in this one. I'm going to raise this on down to 10. And let me see about buying... Oh, doesn't even matter. Okay. So as it starts, we need to go all over the damn place. So, based on that... Huh. Let's see. Now, I believe we... Very as soon as quickly, we are... As soon as possible, we need to get on over to Milan. So we're going to start off in Venice. And as you can see, we need to go to three different locations as soon as possible. Which is between Venice... And Porto Guaro and Triste. So because of that, the only reason I'm saying that is there's not really anything else that's available that's within you know distance of building in a, a small area whatsoever. So let's also look. Oh, okay. I want to look at the map. I forget which one it is. Here we go. Ah, no, it's not that one. Here we go. So we start off. We can actually build in Italy, which is this entire segment right here. Um, then we need to buy into Austria, which is only five hundred thousand, and. Switzerland, which is another 500,000, and Germany is a million. So, it's 1875, which means we need to go and do all of this before 1910, which is a good 35 years. So, let's get started right away. Um, first thing we have to do, as you guys already know, I'm sure, is let's build us a very, very large and totally awesome station. So the reason why it's yellow is because there's actually no track there yet. For some reason, this thing is just running super terribly. Um, but whatever, that's besides the point. I'll do the best that I can with what's available to me. So let's connect Venice on over to this guy right over here into Puerto Guaro. I don't even know if that's the right pronunciation, but it sounds correct to me, so I'm going with it. I'm doing it. You guys can't stop me. So, need to do a bridge, and there goes all my fundage right away. So... Let me sink. Based on what I've seen and what I want to do, I want to go to Tree Stay as soon as possible. But at the same time, I feel like there's not going to be a lot of um, uh, a lot of money coming on in right away, especially at the very beginning of this level. Um, I haven't played this in in years, so I'm just going off of based off my root memory as well as how this this kind of stuff works. So what I'm going to plan on doing is let's get a fairly average train. And I'm looking at the different options. We have the Sterling, the Consolidation, uh, the Fairly, the Crampton, and these are all super expensive. Wow. Really? <laughs> I have three, four trains to choose from. Four of them are all over 100,000. So as it starts, I'm just going to choose the, the Fairly because there's not going to be a lot of stuff to begin with. Um, in the future, I'm going to switch on over to probably the, the Sterling or the Consolidation as soon as possible. But for right now, it's just definitely not worth it. Um... So let's buy that, get that up and running, and set up our water, and also our maintenance facility. Yes, okay. Hold on, I didn't mean to hit that little switch. Hit that little switch if you didn't notice, it actually increases the light and reduces the light that's available on the map. Um, so if you if it's a little nighttime and you can't really see stuff very well, then definitely you want to go and spend some money on that. Uh, let's see, grain farm is 350, and let's see what this guy is right here. This one is a food orchard for 210. 
Let's see. I'm gonna buy that because I'll have some more money available to me. Actually, let's see. I have the money available right now for this. So, let me get this guy right here. Now let's increase the speed to fast, and so we can get things started. And drink some water, because it is still freaking hot. Now I live in Southern California, and they just have that huge, crazy heat wave where everything was like 110 10 degrees, and you just like, oh my god, it is freaking hot as balls. It was really sucked. It was terrible. Um, so we're almost kind of getting over that, but it's still, it's just... I have my windows open, I have the fan on, and I'm just <laughs> trying to do as well as possible without overheating. So if I stop to take a drink, uh, I apologize. I'm just trying to, to cool myself on down and make it so that I can keep on going and, and talk for long periods of time. Also, I want to start off and say that if you haven't watched the other videos, um, you always want to make sure that when you create some of your initial track, you want to start off in a, in a city of sizable portions, as well as... Uh, the main reason why I really wanted this city is because there's two ports, and the ports actually, in the beginning of the game, and throughout the entire uh, part of the game, they actually just create random content, like random goods. So, for instance, uh, it, it'll just supply five weapons a year, as well as it has some demand. So, using that information, you can actually do a pretty good job of just taking the content and the goods that are supplied and created in the port, and start, you know, moving it on around to the other locations at a requirement. So... I always try to make it, especially uh, when you have something like this, when you hover over your station, everything that's outlined in the green right there, whatever buildings are actually placed inside of there, will instantly have the, the goods like transported to them, as well as their supplies and demands will be instantly part of that actual station. So anything that's created inside of this port will automatically um, be taken from that port and make it accessible to the trains. Otherwise, if it's not, then you have the option of, you know, just do this real quick. Migrate on over to where all the goods are. So this is actually, when you look at this map, this is all the goods that are supplied and available. And you can watch as they start trickling on down to other locations. Because for instance, right here, there's a lot of content. There's, what, let's see, let's actually look at the map right there. So if we have this logging camp, this logging camp is actually creating and generating uh, pulp wood as well as logs per year. But since they don't have a station there collecting that content and collecting those goods, it doesn't have a way to get there. It'll just um, go there on its own. It'll just migrate depending on, you know, supply and demand. So let me go back over here to the fruit orchard. And let's see, it's 360 grand. So I'll wait till I'm able to afford that and I'll buy that guy on that. And then I'll be on my merry way. So it's, it, um, the way the game works and you gotta re be really careful about is that if you build up too soon, um, as you'll notice that, like, you'll have Tree Stay, which has one and a half stars, and you'll have uh, Venice, which has two stars. But there's not a lot of, of goods, there's not a lot of uh, actual industries that have been created as of yet, so there's not a lot of supply and demand that are required for some of the content and some of the goods that are available. So, you run into a problem where if you build too fast, none of those industries have been built, there's not a lot of supply and demand, you have trains that are running back and forth constantly over and over again. Oh, like, it's up to 500,000 now. Crap. Um, and so you run into a situation where growing prosperity you you pretty much connected up all the stations you can they've already uh, done the supply and demand for all the goods that are available to it as it currently stands uh, all right and at that point you just have sort of trains that are moving back and forth not really you know moving around a lot of stuff or if they do it's like for 25 grand or you know 17 grand or 18 grand which barely covers the amount of money that it takes to actually have that training function because you have the water towers, uh, which just having them existing, and whenever they're used, they cost money. You'll have your maintenance station, which whenever they're used, they cost money. And so, it, and then you also just have the trains, which has maintenance as well as the train over time degrades and needs to be replaced. So if you don't have, actually have a lot of stuff being moved around, and you just have a train going back and forth, just doing very small little runs, then it's actually uh, detrimental to your monies, uh, to actually your cash flow. So you want to be careful with that. I'm going to buy this grain right now. As you see, I'm just going and buying industries as I can right now because I know that it'll take a little bit of time for things to kind of mosey on up and maybe like a year or two. Especially with that just constantly giving me little ticks. That's just constantly going to provide me money throughout the entire game. As you can see, it's, it's a positive 35 grand. So if I buy that, uh, it, it'll pay off in the long run. As well as 
as the game goes on, those become more and more and more expensive. They, they never go bad. And especially when the game lasts for 35 years, you know, if you get that at the very beginning, that's 35 times 35, which is way more. That's almost a million dollars when you buy it for 350. So it actually ends up being beneficial to you and being worth your while. Um, so those are always good things to invest in. And now that I've let a little time go on by and I'm actually making quite a bit of money, let's see. Yes, I'll need 187. Now, let me go and look. So I actually have my company. It has 63 grand. Let me see how much money I can get if I uh, issue a stock. Um, yes, I want to issue stock. And the reason I want to issue stock in this one, and I don't really care about it, is that since I'm not doing comp uh, competition with anyone, I'm pretty much, if I go and I issue stock, and uh, it doesn't matter. I can, I can issue as much as I want. Um, the only problem that you run into is that as you issue stock, uh, it degrades the, the amount of money in your company and makes it so that if you try to issue stock more in the future uh, You won't be able to get as much money back from issuing stock, but as my uh, Train track gets bigger as well as my company gets bigger and I move around to other locations and more and more That'll become more money that's available to me. So issue a little bit now make it so that I can kind of connect up from uh, one station to another from like Puerto Guaro to Triste and make it so I can get that train up and running uh, more quickly uh, it'll benef benefit me more in the long run. Now as you saw some of the other actual missions that we've worked on where you have to deal with um, having a certain amount in your book or making it so that you're the only actual company in existence at a certain point in time. Uh, economy slowing. So now, let me see. Uh, no, it's too much. So, yeah, you run into those situations where that becomes an imperative and that becomes a giant portion of how to actually get the gold in the game. Whereas right now, that's not the case. That's not, like, if I go and I issue some stock now, it's not going to be detrimental to me. It's not going to prevent me from, or making it more difficult for me to get a gold. It's just, uh, you know, I have more stock. <laughs> there, there, there's more of that money, that, that 10% to be uh, spread around to more people. And since none of the people actually really exist, I don't really have to worry about it. Um, my needs and requirements to actually have a good book uh, aren't that high. So that's why I feel fine with actually just issuing that stock. As well as you notice that my cash flow has actually increased, um, despite the fact that I'm only actually issuing, what is it, I think 10 cents per stock. So almost like it's a piddly amount of money that I'm issuing. Yeah, 10 cents for the dividend. Um, that's because just actually being in the game and playing the game and being the owner of the company you're actually able to to make a profit and you're ju you just get paid a wage every single month so if you're wondering how that kind of creeps on up you get a, a static wage for owning the company and as long as you're not in the negative and you're not paying interest that'll continually grow over and over again and so you get paid off of actually how much stock you have so right here I think I'd make like two grand a year um, just based on how this actually works on out and my normal wage so I'll continually buy into it because there's no reason not to, and I think and I'm almost at the point now where I can buy, I can buy a medium, but I can't buy my first train yet. Let's see, fairly is 30 grand. All right, so I'll do for the next tick, and I'll go from Triste on over to Puerto Guaro. So taking a drink. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm actually just drinking water, so don't get all up in arms. Don't get upset. Don't don't uh, don't be sad for me because I'm actually quite thirsty and I didn't want to actually drink any alcohol or beer. It's not Tuesday night, so I don't actually have a reason to do Minecrafting sessions where I get stupid drunk. That or my podcasting on Thursday where I just pretty much chug beer for a straight hour and uh, hope for the best. So, based on the distance between Triste and Portuguaro, I'm actually going to create two water towers, maybe about a third of the way between each. Uh, one right before the bridge, one a little bit after the bridge, and do a maintenance facility halfway between. Um, you don't need to do maintenance facilities nearly as often as you do the little water towers, just because they, you know, if you go and actually watch the trains, they run out of water way faster than they run out of sand, which they get provided at the maintenance facility. So, just a little tip. Um, this little section right here, I need at least one maintenance tower and at least one water facility. Because uh, you pretty much need that between two cities no matter what, especially if you just have a train connecting between the two of them. So that's why I have it about right in the middle, so that hopefully it doesn't get super up to speed and have to slow back down again. It kind of just jumps on over from one to the other. 
So that's why I have them right next to each other. But here, since it's a little bit farther, I have the one maintenance facility and the two water towers. Now, if you look at your trains and you notice that they're becoming damaged, let me just look at one real quick. You look at this guy right here and he's like, oh man, he's only been alive for three years and he's about to bust. Then you probably need to revamp and relook at what's available to you and uh, create some more like maintenance facilities and water. But until then, yeah, don't worry about it. Now let's see, let's look at this logging camp. This logging camp does 370,000 per year, but I think it actually does pretty well. So it actually migrates all that content on over. And what you can actually look at is um, you're not actually only required. One of the things that I, I took me a while to realize as well as it took me a while after discussing this with one of my buddies who was actually also a big fan of this game is that you don't actually only have to build stations um, in the locations where they show cities. Like for instance, let's say you actually have a furniture factory and your furniture factory is over in Tree State, and it just takes forever for your content to get on over. You notice that your furniture factory is struggling, it's not actually really going anywhere, and you want to fix that. Well, what you can do is you can actually build a station that connects on up between, you know, over where the logging camps are. Like if you are, if you're building something which requires a lot of coal, and you have a, um, I don't remember actually the building that has a huge giant requirement for coal. Sorry while I'm doing this, I'm actually building a road on over to Verona right now. And you notice, that, yeah, so you need a lot of coal, and let's say there's coal way over in the boonies. And you're just looking at it like, I that coal can't get here fast enough. It's really annoying the hell out of me, and I want that coal, and I want it here faster. You can just build, you know, one station, a huge giant one, so it actually picks up all the coal right around it. And once you have that, you know, you just make it so that that goes to the location where you need it. Because the demand, of course, is going to be high for your factory that requires that coal. Uh, let's see. I feel like I can do a little bit better. There we go. And so once you have that good, and once you have that going, then you just pretty much, you know, that that's how you make it so you are able to uh, fill your own supply and demand. Okay, so that's Shea. That's engine type. That's a little bit better than the, what I was using before. Although, look at that annual maintenance, which is 15 grand. It's quite a bit. So Verona isn't actually a very big city. Um, it might get bigger in the long run, but for right now, I'm just going to build a small station because I want my monies. I want to be able to make more money in the future. And so I, I might just upgrade that in the future if it's absolutely a requirement. Now this is one of the situations um, where I just built a station. I don't actually have any maintenance facilities as of yet, but what you can do is that as soon as you build a station, you can just, let's go from Venice. You always want to go from the big one to the small one. And Venice is most definitely the bigger city between the two if it's two and a half stars. So let's see. Um, now that I have a bit of money, uh, let's start investing in bigger trains. And so I'm going to either do the Sterling or the Consolidation. Now let's look at the speed. The speed is much higher for the Sterling. Um, the Consolidation, even if there's a grade, it keeps on, uh, on up. So if you actually have absolutely flat between uh, 0 and 1% the entire way, then you'll definitely want to do the Sterling, but if you have any uphill, like you notice that when we were building the track we had a little bit of 2% in a couple places. Um, I'm going to go with Consolidation because it'll have a higher uh, average speed overall. So let's do that guy. And so now that i built that, um, I don't actually have any maintenance facilities as of yet, but look at how much money I'll be making on my very first run. So. Uh, let's see, 150 grand just going from Venice to Verona. So now that I'm, I was able to make that, now you, you, that doesn't happen every single time. Also, look at Verona to Venice, look how far away it is. Because of this, I'm actually going to build three water stations and two maintenance facilities to make it so that uh, it's able to go and handle the train. Now, that's just based off of me playing the game quite a bit and having a general idea of what I believe I can get by without actually having my train break down all over the place. Um, you can do it differently. You can build a lot more. It just makes it a lot more difficult to obtain the gold because you have a lot less money dedicated to infrastructure and uh, spending money on things that you require it. Also, if you just notice right here, this guy just popped up right here. So I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to issue some stock. Got 105,000, and I'm going to buy this right now. The whole reason is, is that as soon as um, something pops up, that's usually the cheapest it's ever going to get unless it's like a, um, a company 
or um, not a company, but it's it's like a facility that actually is making negative profit. So like if you go and you build a, a let's say a furniture factory and you're in the same situation that you were in before, where you have a logging camp and there's just no logging camps whatsoever. Um, that stuff is randomly generated in the game, so you, you can have a situation where, like right here in the middle of nowhere, there's like a logging camp, and uh, or there's like a furniture factory. Nothing gets over there, and it's super cheap. Um, that's like a situation where you don't want to buy, but as I said before, pretty much whenever you have something like a grain farm or something that naturally produces content, like a, a, a logging farm or a sheep or dairy farm, those are always going to generate profit, and if you can get them right when they spawn, that's when they're going to become cheapest. Uh, it's because they actually haven't adapted to what's around them. And so because of that, uh, you want to go and grab them as soon as possible. If you have to float up, you know, buy some, do some stock, you can always take that stock that you just purchased and, um, you know, buy it back later. But that, that like, if I waited a year or if I waited a couple months, that would have been probably $400,000. So it would have easily doubled. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm actually trying to avoid this little uh, hill right here. And I'm going to try to go around it and head on over to, what's my next one? Milan. Oh, that's so far away. But I did get quite a bit of money, so I'm actually in a pretty good situation. Now, I actually thought it was a little bit closer. I made a mistake on my own part, <laughs> where I thought it was way closer than it actually was. So, but Milan is one of the, like, once I connect this on up, I'll have a train and what I do not recommend is actually having multiple trains on the same track. Um, if you're not familiar with how the train system works, is that you can have a train, um, and let's say you actually have two trains between Verona and Venice. And they might be going back and forth, they're not always going to be going at the same speed, but what happens is that the t uh, two trains actually are on the same path at the same time, meaning that they crisscross, then the train that actually has less value on it and costs less of the goods that it's actually transporting are less, it actually gets put on hold and is put into a pause and goes down to zero miles per hour and lets the train with more uh, expensive content inside of it pass on through it. So if you don't have double track, you run into that situation. If you have a way faster train and a way uh, uh, less fast train, <laughs> you know like the average speed was like the 20 miles per hour campaign, uh, compared to the 60 miles per hour, you run into that situation where you just constantly, it's just waiting. So. What you might end up doing, um, if you really, really enjoy set, uh, setting up exactly what type of goods you want to transport, you could potentially, I pause the game just to kind of explain this, you could be going from Venice on over to Verona, carrying and allowing to have up to eight cars, and every one of those cars is uh, carrying a good that's about 20 grand. And so if you have eight cars times 20, that's a 160 grand car, and then you might have another fast train, which is carrying four cars, and each one of those is 25 grand. And so. Your fast train is carrying 100 grand worth of content, and your slow train is carrying 160 grand, and so that fast train is just going to be sitting behind the slow train the entire time. The slow train will pass it, the fast train will catch on up again and start moving. It'll run into the slow train once again, and it'll stop, and it'll just completely be essentially, you know, riding right behind it, bumper to bumper the entire way because it doesn't actually have as much content inside of it. So that's the reason why I pretty much never never allow for that to happen. You can also set it up so that your um, your fast train has the right of way and you can do that with this, the, the train's priority, but then you also run into a situation where if you have your fast train which has one content on it and it's just completely you know a waste of time and it's making it so that your slow train actually just goes slower because it just gets stopped all the damn time. So I try not to as much as possible. Just, you know, I connect up two locations, have one train go in between them, because pretty much as, as the goods kind of generate and they propel themselves and they build themselves, um, it goes and it moves the, the fastest content and the most expensive content as uh, fast as possible, as soon as possible. So I think already 15 years has gone on by. Oh man, it takes forever in this game. The thing is, is that this game, it's, it's such like a snowball effect where. If you don't set up like right on the very front, then it takes a long time for you to build on up and have more money available to you. And when that happens, it just takes you long longer because every single time you get paid, you run into a problem. Um, you also have the situation where if you go and you get into debt and you need to pay off the debt, then instead of you building stuff when you actually have money coming on in or as more factories come on out and you're actually getting money, you're just spending that money on paying off debt. So you just have to be careful. 
because that's why I try to never actually buy bonds unless I absolutely need to. Uh, so let's get this going. And notice how big and giant this place is. Okay. Uh, damn it, keep hitting that. So we look at this, and this has steel mills, steel mills, and so this is one of the situations that you can run into where you notice that it's losing 122 grand a year. So if you buy it, the steel mill is only 1.7 million. I think generally if you just bought, buy it like out of nowhere, um, build it yourselves, I think it's around 3.5 million. So one of the situations that you can do is you can go and say, I'm going to build a station here, uh, issue a couple bonds, buy like all the steel mills on up, and then set it on up so that this just supplies it with what it needs, which is uh, coal as well as iron. And if you're able to supply that, then they'll become profitable and it's worth your while. Now that's a lot of effort, doesn't always work on out. Uh, sometimes you have to set up some designated trains to make it so it just transport exactly what it requires and what it wants. Um, so if you want to do something like that, you're more than welcome to, to save the game, give it a shot, see exactly what it takes. And if you're able to do that and it works for you, awesome. Um, Let's see, for right now, I'm just going to connect up Milan to Verona. Let's get one of these consolidation guys going. Now, that should be quite an expensive train. Let's see, 157 grand. So I can use that to build some maintenance facilities. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to actually make a train from Milan all the way to Venice. And that train should be huge. I might actually just make it so that that train is um, can, like six cargo and just let it do its thing, make me lots of money, <laughs> and just don't ever worry about it again. Because um, generally, like if you connect up two big cities, then sometimes that'll be like the most amount of money that it can actually transfer. So if we zone on out... So yeah, if I don't, I just take people, which, look, there's one person required. That little number next to it is 1.0, is how many people of the total amount are waiting to go there, so that's two. So two people at $34 per cart, so that'd be two carts of people. So that'd be 68,000. Let me pause this. And so weapons. Weapons wants to go between there to Verona. Mail is expensive. Um, we also have wheat. So they'd be able to take wheat. They'd be able to take the clothing. Um, milk wouldn't care. But if we go and look over at Milan and see what's available right here. Not a lot of people available. But apparently all those people want to go on over to, um, what is it, Venice? Fruit, not so great. Uh, iron, not so great, and milk is decent. So it looks like there's a lot better stuff that's available at Venice than there is in Milan. That's also because Venice has had a, um, a lot of its goods filled up a lot longer than Milan has, and so it's able to go and create some of those uh, higher priced goods. So let me get this started. Now let's see. We have here, here, and here. And let's build one of these guys right here. And I'm going to build one more. I think that this is about the optimal spot. So it's almost like I build... For every three water stations, I'll build two towers. Or two maintenance facilities. So it, you kind of think about it that way. I don't know. Maybe fractions is your, your strong point. Maybe, uh, maybe that helps you kind of think of how often you should place it. But that's generally how I work it. Um, you definitely don't need it as much. Let's set this guy up right here. And now that I have that, so let's go and look at what else is available. Now I'm probably also going to do a connection between Milan and Bergamo, just so I can kind of fill that on up and get some of those requirements and needs. And I am looking forward to building that actual train to go all the way from Milan. There we go. So let's go to Venice. Actually, let's do this uh, consolidation. Let's do between Venice all the way to Milan. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because when we're looking at Venice, Venice actually had a lot more expensive content going on over to Milan than it was vice versa. So I think that'll kind of even out. And I'm going to set it up so that each one of these is going to be able to carry up to five cars. So let's set that up. And I am right now setting it so that the, the train priority is low um, because the, the content between, going between Milan and Verona might actually be better off and I'll help Verona grow a little bit. Uh, this is just sort of just a train to make me some extra money. See, look at that, 205 grand. So that's actually uh, it's pretty nice. 
I'm happy with it. Are you happy with it? 